in this video we will try to understand analysis of rankine vapor power cycle in case of steam power plant when the steam is superheated at the entry to the steam turbine now the flow diagram and th diagram is shown over here so as you can see over here the various components which are present in this particular flow diagram they are boiler superheater steam turbine condenser and hot well and then the feed pump so we'll start with the feed pump so feed pump from the hot well the water is supplied to the boiler via feed pump or using feed pump so one to two it is the pump work then in the boiler the heat is supplied and the various types of the heats which are supplied in the boiler are sensible heat latent heat and then when the steam becomes dry saturated at the boiler pressure of p1 bar it is supplied to the superheater in the superheater the heat of flue gases is utilized to heat further the dry saturated steam so that it will become superheated steam now that superheated steam at point 4 will be expanded in the steam turbine and after expansion the mechanical work is obtained and the steam turbine shaft is coupled with the generator shaft to convert that particular mechanical work into the electrical work or electrical energy this superheated steam when it expands in the steam turbine will get converted to the wet steam and then it is allowed to enter into the condenser where vacuum is maintained and the cooling water is also circulated so in the condenser latent heat will be absorbed from the wet steam so that it will get converted to the saturated water so only phase change will take place in the condenser so from vapor to liquid and the heat that is absorbed is nothing but the latent heat because temperature is remaining the same and there is only phase change so that saturated water it is stored in the hot well and from the hot well at a lower pressure because during the expansion the pressure has decreased so at lower pressure it is pumped by the feed pump and then it is given to the boiler at the higher pressure now the various processes they are shown on the ts diagram so 1 to 2 it is the pump work then 2 to 3 it is a sensible heat that is supplied in the boiler 3 to 3 dash this is the latent heat of the evaporation because from at point 3 it is saturated liquid at point 3 dash it is dry saturated steam now 3 dash to 4 it is the heat of superheat which is supplied in the superheater and from 4 to 5 there is a isentropic expansion in the steam turbine and during which the work is obtained and during the isentropic process the entropy before expansion remains same as entropy after expansion now this wet steam will be entering into the condenser and in the condenser again latent heat of condenser is condensation is absorbed by the cooling water which is circulated so the condition is changed from 5 to 1 that is from wet steam to the saturated water that we have already seen so at point 1 it is a saturated liquid so we have to use the formulas of sf and hf then at point 4 if the condition of the steam is superheated so we have to use the formula for entropy of superheated steam specific entropy of superheated steam and specific enthalpy of superheated steam at point 5 the condition that we have assumed it is a wet steam so the formulas which will be required for analysis will be specific entropy of wet steam and specific enthalpy of wet steam and at point 1 as it is a saturated water it will be sf and hf that is specific entropy of water and specific enthalpy of water before entering into the pump that is the feed pump so let us start with the analysis part of this particular rankine vapor power cycle so as we have already seen the point 4 it is in the superheated region point 3 dash it is lying on the dry saturated curve point 3 it is lying on the saturated liquid curve so the temperature which is corresponding to point 4 it is a superheated steam temperature and at the boiler pressure and at point 3 it is the saturation temperature the difference between these two temperature is known as the degree of superheat now let us see the various nomenclatures over here so p1 is the boiler pressure p2 is the condenser pressure or exhaust pressure 1 to 2 it is the pump work in kilojoule per kg 2 to 3 sensible heat that is added in the boiler 3 to 3 dash it is the latent heat added in the boiler and 3 dash to 4 it is the heat of superheat and 4 to 5 it is the isentropic expansion in steam turbine and 5 to 1 which is not written over here it is the heat rejected in the condenser so these are the various processes now we have to find out the dryness fraction at the exit of the turbine that is at point 5 because at point 5 the condition of the steam is wet 
so we'll use the condition that is s4 is equal to s5 that is at point 4 the condition is superheated so specific entropy of superheated steam at point 4 is equal to specific entropy of wet steam at point 5 now specific entropy of wet steam is given by sf plus x into sfg where sf is the specific entropy of water and sfg is the specific entropy of evaporation now we'll substitute the formula for s superheated also so s superheated is given by it is hg plus cp ln of t sup divided by t sat at point 4 is equal to sf plus x5 into sfg so hg is the specific entropy of dry saturated steam and to that if we add the specific entropy at constant pressure then this total will become the specific entropy of superheated steam because specific entropy of superheated steam will be the when the steam is further heated dry saturated steam is further heated at constant pressure then it will become superheated so it is dry plus the specific entropy corresponding to the constant pressure now transfer this sf term on this side so it will become negative and then divide by this sfg term so we'll get the specific so we'll get the trans fraction at point 5 now hg is nothing but the specific entropy of dry saturated steam at boiler pressure and this sf and sfg will be the specific entropy of wet steam at the condenser pressure so these values will have to take from the steam table now wp is the pump work and it is changing pressure into specific volume because the pump is handling water in this particular case so as you can see over here p1 is the boiler pressure p2 is the condenser pressure p1 minus p2 higher pressure minus lower pressure but that is in bar so we have to convert that particular pressure from bar to kilopascal so we have to we have to multiply it by 100 so this is the term which will be in kilopascal so it is kilonewton per meter square specific volume at condenser pressure is in meter cube per kg so one meter will remain over here so meter cube and meter square so it will be kilonewton meter per kg newton meter is joule so it is kilo joule per kg so this is the required unit in which we are expressing the pump work so pump work already we have expressed in kilojoule per kg now as we have already seen that one to two it is the pump work process so in terms of enthalpy also it will be h2 minus h1 that is higher enthalpy minus lower enthalpy now transfer this negative term on the other side so it will become positive so this wp plus h1 will be equal to h2 now the most important part is 4 to 5 isentropic expansion process so turbine work we have to express in kilojoule per kg so isentropic expansion is taking place in turbine so higher enthalpy minus lower enthalpy that is h4 minus h5 will be the turbine work where h4 at point 4 the condition is superheated steam so h4 is equal to specific enthalpy of superheated steam that is equal to hg plus cp t superheated minus t saturated so hg is the specific enthalpy of steam at the saturation and that is at boiler pressure p1 and to that particular enthalpy if we add the enthalpy corresponding to constant pressure that is mcp delta t where mass is 1 so steam is further heated at constant pressure from 3 dash to 4 and the temperature difference is t sup minus t sat that is degree of superheat so to the dry saturated steam enthalpy if we add the additional enthalpy at constant pressure then this total will become specific enthalpy of superheated steam at point 5 the condition is wet so h5 is nothing but h wet and that is equal to h f plus x5 into h f g so here it will be x5 which we have already calculated in our previous step so h f and h f g will be at the condenser pressure because point 5 is corresponding to the condenser pressure and then the network that will be equal to turbine work minus pump work now h s is nothing but the heat supplied so heat is supplied from point 2 onwards up to point 4 so 2 to 3 sensible heat then latent heat from 3 to 3 dash and then heat of superheat in the superheater so h4 higher enthalpy minus lower enthalpy so h4 minus h2 will be the heat supplied and at point 4 already we have seen that the in it is the condition is superheated so h4 is nothing but h superheated and that is equal to hg plus cp t superheated minus t saturated so once we know the value of heat supplied we can easily find out the rankine cycle efficiency that is network divided by heat supplied multiplied by 100 so in this way we can find out the efficiency of rankine cycle 
when the steam is superheated at the entry to the steam turbine thank you very much for watching